December already, like how? Um, but anyway, hey Alexa, stop. Yeah, we are officially out of sync with Vlogmas and we are on episode two just because I've started late. Um, but you know, better late than never, right? I really want this next advent to be the white one um, because I've had the plain, the salted caramel, which was so good. Oh my God. No, that's so good. Mmm, absolutely stunning. And the gingerbread one, um, which I thought was gonna taste more like gingerbread. It tasted like gingerbread, but it was very subtle, like very subtle. So, um, yeah, I wanna taste the white one. Please be the white one. Please, 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 please. No, no, and it was so broken. Oh, when are they going to give me a white one? You guys know my favorite type of chocolate by this point is dark chocolate, like very bitter dark chocolate. Um, but I still like tasting white chocolate just because it's more unusual. Um, but anyway, the salted caramel one, I'm not going to complain because it is very, very good. It's also the fifth, which means we have mum's advent as well. So that is downstairs. I'm going to go in and get that in a sec. It's so good, this chocolate. Oh my God. Mm, mm. episode two of vlogmas what is happening so i am basically going to have my first ever cervical smear test at my local doctor surgery my gp it's um yes my first time having this on the 15th of december i will be turning 25 i am 24 and basically as a female as someone with a cervix i have been invited to my first cervical smear test i actually had a letter like earlier this year i tried to book it before i went to switzerland but i didn't know when i'd be back so i was just like i'll leave it until i get home and now i've booked it and it is today at 2 30 p.m this is something as well that i am very passionate is not the right word but as you guys know the biology geek in me like this is something i will geek out about and you guys know i don't like shy away from talking about stuff that's a bit more tmi or taboo like periods or smear tests like today or stuff happening down below with our bodies and smear tests are incredibly useful as screening tools to be honest with you i don't think it's gonna be that bad at all okay like me this time maybe like one and a half to two years ago i would have felt very uncomfortable about this but i actually woke up today feeling fine i was like i'm just gonna go and have it done but i am having as you guys know laser hair removal i have one session left basically out of my eight sessions that i booked in january i'm having like laser hair basically everywhere so that means people have to see down there and i have a different person doing my laser hair pretty much every single time and i'm just kind of used to it now like the first time i had it done i felt very uncomfortable and i was just a bit like oh my gosh someone is like seeing down there and all this stuff but now i'm just like it's fine and with the cervical spin test i am doing something to care for my health you know i said in episode one of vlogmas so yesterday's video that this christmas season is all about like growth and working on ourselves before the new year um which is 2023 not 2022 but yeah that is how i'm feeling right now i think it's like a 20 minute slot so it's pretty quick i have it done with a nurse um i've been sent a text reminder and i have a female nurse carol that sounds like females me. You can obviously get male nurses, but if you want a female specifically, I didn't do this, but I assume you can request to have a female nurse if you'd feel more comfortable with that, which is something I would feel more comfortable with. Like if I had a male nurse, I would feel a bit like, mm, not really too sure. And also I am kind of okay down there now because I use my menstrual cup and I feel like I'm an expert on that now. So, yeah, I think it's gonna be fine. I'm not stressing out about it at all. One of my friends actually said that I think you can take or request a chaperone if you feel maybe slightly uncomfortable having just one other person doing stuff, like taking the smear test. You can have someone else called a chaperone come in with you and they will observe and just be an extra body and pair of eyes in the room. But yeah, if you watched episode one, you will be familiar with the red mug, which I got from mum. Oh, also I put up my little Christmas tree this morning in my room. I did some organization. This is the twig tree. As you can see, it has the bells on it, which jingle, um, like jingle bells, obviously. Um, I have my advent calendar. And then when I have my mug on my desk as well, it just looks 
really nice and Christmassy. Very exciting. Very exciting. Look at the shapes. They're like crackers. Can you just chuck one into my chuck one? Oh, you've got to say which hand I'm chucking. Uh, oh, I think I like socks or something. Oh, can you chuck oh, it in and uh, chuck this one, please? I definitely it's think, yeah, very expensive socks paper. or knickers could be in theme with today's video. Big knickers. Yeah, it would be big knickers. <gasps> Ooh, green socks. Ooh. <laughs> They're like stocking. No, Christmas what? tree socks. Christmas yeah, tree like socks. Christmas lights. Christmas oh, yeah. lights. Holly, what do you think? stockings. Oh, socks. Thank you, Mum. I'm just going to make a hot drink in my mug. <gasps> I can use the... Do you remember our... My shaving Shave. thing. What? My shaving thing. The stencil. <laughs> the stencil season again. We can try doing that. Anyway, this is the Christmas tree. As I said, it's not decorated yet, but we have our Christmas tree all and to Holly. yeah. All to me. You didn't ask me to come and help, Mum. I was also tutoring yesterday. I saw you doing it. You looked like you were having a great time. I wanted a bigger tree though this year. Yeah. Actually. What's happening um, today, Mum? What am I having? Oh, your first smear test. Yeah. Do you want to give me any advice? Well, I'll just uh, enjoy. It's got to be done, doesn't it? They're not. Uh, I know. I'm not scared. They're not the most pleasant things. Oh really? I don't. Mum, you get a bit yeah, nervous. Not, Mum like doesn't really like this sort of stuff. I really don't. I, yeah. They're just going to shove something in and pull it out. Well, exactly. Yes, it's this metal thing. They'll, you know. Yeah, somebody told me it's quite cold. Yeah, well, they've got so it might be a bit lubricant. like, oh. They might put a bit of lubricant on. Okay, so well, nothing else to tell me or the vlog, no? No, it doesn't take long. You just have to relax. I think mm. that's the problem with where I, I, when I go and have a sewing, I don't really like them. I, I can't relax. Hmm. But yes, don't tell the whole world that. I'm sure it'll be fine. <laughs> yes, it will be fine. Right now, I'm gonna make a hot drink. This is Mighty Milk. I really like um, this milk, actually. They do, like, whole or semi. It's kind of like normal cow's milk, but plant milk. And then I need to find the stencil. If you watched Vlog Massage it, I had a stencil that I tried to use and always failed, but we can always try and do it again. Um, I'm just gonna drink some of this milk because it's really nice. It's so good. I think it's pea milk. Pea protein, yeah. I love pea protein milk. It's so good. I have loads of barista, barista. barista. professional milks to use still. Oh, like, I think it's barista. You're saying barista, like barista in a. Oh, oh barista. 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 Almond Breeze Barista. Oatly Barista. Ah, barista. Uh, barista. Milk of choice. Minor figures. Barista Oat Light milk we're gonna try and make a nice oose matcha latte i don't actually know how to make matcha lattes properly so if you are wondering don't ask me i don't have the answer oh it's frothing right stop stupid thing mm. too hot sprinkling's not gonna work is it no i think it needs to be on quite yeah, it's not gonna work, but we'll save it for a different video. It's now a matcha tea, it's not really a matcha latte. Yeah. Oh well. It does look like matcha, the colour is green. I do love the matcha colour. Milka! Hey Min! What you want? Thank you! <laughs> oh! You don't wanna be with me now? I'm on my way. I'm um, just a little up. Date. I'll be there in like half an hour perfectly on time hopefully and I hope they're not running too late because doctors are normally running late you know I'm just listening to a podcast it's not too cold today actually um and the sun has come out a bit but yeah I'll let you know when I arrive so I'm just yeah. gonna gently pop this to the side if I can yep When it was in the clamp, what's it called? The, the speculum. Oh, when the speculum was in, I couldn't really feel the brush okay, going around. Some yeah. people do, some people don't. So it's okay. different for everyone. It was all done, it was all like so smooth and easy and yeah, it was like a half an hour appointment. My nurse was so, so nice. She made me feel like really comfortable and like relaxed and just, 
yeah everything was totally fine and yeah i didn't really feel anything as i said at the end when they use the brush which is really cool it has like a tip on the end um when they rotate that clockwise like a few times um they do a certain number of rotations i couldn't really feel that some people do feel that the only thing that i felt was when they put in the thing beginning with an s oh the name has gone out of my head again the spec the speculum when she inserted that i could feel it but other than that everything was honestly fine i've had my first ever smear test which is yeah an achievement you know like something as i said that in the past i would have been like oh my gosh i'm so scared and i probably would have put it off i'm just walking back home though i'm gonna get some fresh air before it goes dark and then yeah i'll talk to you guys a bit about the biology when i get back because i want to share that good um evening i should say from your resident frizzy haired biologist by this point in the day the hair is just so frizzy um and i was on a walk and the wind was just full force attacking the hair. I'm gonna turn on this twig tree, right? Um, for the first time this year? Oh, okay, we either don't have batteries or the batteries are dead. Okay, no batteries. I apologize for that anti-climax. I added some biology to my alcohol video, so if you like this one, you can check out that video, which I will leave down below. I spoke about my personal experience with alcohol in that, and then I threw in some biology, and I am planning to do a video on biology still, and hopefully on this topic as well. I really don't know where to start with this because there's a lot going on. Um, but I think we'll start with HPV. One in five cancers basically are caused by an infectious agent, whether that be like a virus or a bacterium, for example. And in this case, we're talking about HPV, so human papilloma virus. It is a tumor virus and tumor viruses, there are like seven main ones, but we are now discovering more. And for example, we know HIV can also be associated with cancer now. Um, but let me not stray off topic too much. Coming back to HPV, we classify HIV types because there are lots of them, but the ones very relevant here are the high risk types. And we have most well studied HPV types 16 and 18. And these high risk types of HPV, they are the primary risk factors for cervical cancer. That is cancer obviously of the cervix. And now the cervix is the lower portion of your uterus and the majority of cervical cancer cases are associated with a HPV infection with one of these high risk types, normally types 16 and 18. And they can cause other cancers. So not only cervical cancer, but also like penile cancers, anogenital cancers, and also head and neck cancer. The thing we should note though is that even though these high risk types of HPV are known carcinogens, so they cause cancer because a carcinogen is a cancer causing agent, they most often cause infections that are transient, asymptomatic, and they are just cleared by your immune system without needing any medical treatment. And it's only when these infections become persistent and these viruses express certain proteins that result in abnormal cell growth and division. They lead to what we call genetic instability, where we increase the rate of mutations in a cell and we prevent like cell death, for example. When the expression of those proteins as i said is like dysregulated and abnormal when the virus just persists and the infection isn't cleared that is when we can result in cancerous transformation and tumorigenesis carcinogenesis there are so many different terms that we can use but i do want to stress that most hpv infections are not problematic at all and it's only when the viral life cycle goes awry that we can lead to changes in the cells that can accumulate and go down the road of causing cancer, you know, because cancer doesn't develop overnight. It takes a lot of changes and mutations inside cells before we see malignant transformation of cells. But I guess the final thing to talk about is obviously the smear test and the biology of that. Now we do also have a prophylactic vaccination program. So this is a way to prevent cervical cancer in the first place. And in the UK, um, the vaccination program is offered to girls aged between 12 and 13. So I had the vaccination and the vaccine that I believe is still used in the UK is called Gardasil. It's what we call a tetravalent vaccine because it prevents against against four types of HPV, two of which are the high risk types 16 and 18, but we also vaccinate against types 16 and 11. They are low risk types and the low risk types, even though they are very rarely associated with cancer, they can cause, for example, like genital warts 
and so we just vaccinate against all four of them at the same time so yeah we have this vaccination program but we then also have the pap smear screening program and it's called the pap smear test it's named after the person who discovered it but essentially this has been like a huge success and some studies even argue that it's prevented like a huge epidemic in women because it's prevented so many cervical cancer deaths which is obviously a really good thing it is a safe screening method it is fairly well tolerated obviously some people yes do find it uncomfortable but it is a very simple and easy procedure the reason why i'm ultimately making this video and talking about it is to like hopefully encourage people to you know participate in the screening program because it is so beneficial it's also very sensitive and specific it is cost effective but what the test is essentially doing is it's like brushing cells and taking them from your cervix it's then taken off to a lab where they're going to firstly test to see if you are infected with hpv so they are looking for the hpv dna and if you are negative for hpv dna then they won't do anything else but if you are positive and they detect this dna from the virus they will then analyze and subsequently look at your cervical cells themselves because we can identify abnormal changes in those cells that are kind of like representative of pre-malignant states so basically the stages before cancer it's what we call dysplasia and more specifically it's called sin so cervical intraepithelial neoplasia and there are three types of sin so sin one two and three and they are just increasing in severity the cells become more abnormal and they may eventually progress to cancer but obviously that is a lot further down the line but yeah they basically only look for those abnormal cells if you are positive for hpv dna because as i said before like the majority of cases of cervical cancer are associated with hpv infection so it doesn't really make sense to look for abnormal cells if you are negative for hpv infection if you know you have hpv dna or if you have abnormal cells then they can simply remove those cells and they can also treat the infection so you are dramatically lowering your risk of cervical cancer and that is the ultimate reason why you are invited to have a smear test and why it is so good and I I just really hope that this video has encouraged you guys to you know not be scared but if you do have any questions you can obviously leave those down below whether they're biology related or not biology related oh the thing i should say is that i was asked if i wanted a chaperone like that is true but yeah i hope that really helps you guys and i think i will kind of end this video here like this episode of vlogmas because some of my videos will be more vlog style some will be vlog style with a chatty component to it kind of like this one and then others will just be a simple heart to heart chat about something but yeah i really hope you guys enjoyed it definitely give it a thumbs up if you did comment down below as i said any questions and subscribe to stick around for vlogmas every day this season and um yeah as always i will speak to you very soon tomorrow basically but in another video <laughs> bye we are out of sync. Um, wow, did you hear that click? I will be walking down. Oh my gosh, is it raining? No. Are you scared of Bonnie and Java? Hmm. I don't blame ya. They're a little bit money. I wish Advent was a year-round thing, but I suppose it makes it special, right? Because it's one month in a year. Not like film everything. But I've got two hands here. Mm. Yeah, I know you've got two hands. Oh, this mug smells a bit weird. Whoops, car. <laughs> yeah, it's fine, don't worry. <laughs> it's a lovely angle. Your cervix is the sorry. Uh, is that buzzing my phone? Stop distracting me. I feel so good at myself because I've done something for me.